Welcome back to Lesson 3 AWS Global Infrastructure Overview. Starting from today, I will start to give away 10 voucher exams, so you will get 50% discount of the exam price. To get the voucher, all you need to do is to leave a comment down below and subscribe to the channel. So let us get into it. To understand the global infrastructure of AWS, let us look to the AWS Global Infrastructure Map. So as you can see, if you select that map, you can select and choose a circle on the map to view a summary information about the region represented by the circle. And also you can view the regions and the availability zones. And you can also choose the tab to view a map of a selected geography and a list of regions, edge locations, local zones, and regional caches. The global infrastructure is designed and built to deliver a flexible and reliable, scalable, and secure cloud computing environment with high-quality global network performance. The AWS Global Infrastructure is built around regions. AWS has 22 regions worldwide. An AWS region is a physical geographical location with one or more availability zones. Availability zones consist of one or more data centers to achieve fault tolerance and stability. A region is isolated from one another. The resources in one region are not automatically replicated to other regions. When you store data in a specific region, it is not replicated outside that region. It is your responsibility to replicate data across regions if your business needs require it. Selecting the right region for your services, applications, and data based on these factors. One essential consideration is data governance and legal requirements. In certain countries, and due to local laws, some information cannot leave the border of the country. So let's say you have an Irish customer dealing with life science data stored in a database. In this case, the database should stay in the same country according to the EU Data Protection Act. It is recommended to run your applications and store your data in a region that is as close as possible to the users and systems that will access them. This will help you to reduce latency in your system and you could use a tool like Cloud Ping to check and to test the latency between your location and all AWS regions. Keep in mind that not all services are available in all regions, so you need to check first before migrating your infrastructure to that region. Finally, there is some variation in the cost of running services between regions. Each AWS region has multiple isolated locations that are known as availability zones. Each availability zone provides the ability to operate applications and database that are more highly available, fault tolerant, and scalable than would be possible with a single data center. Each availability zone can include multiple data centers. Each data center can include hundreds of thousands of servers. They are fully isolated partitions of the AWS global infrastructure. All availability zones are interconnected with high bandwidth, low latency networking over fully redundant private network. You are responsible for selecting the availability zone where your systems will operate Systems can span multiple availability zones. AWS recommends replicating the data across multiple availability zones for data resilient. You should design your system to survive the temporary or any failure of an availability zone or a disaster if it happens. The foundation for the AWS infrastructure is the data centers. Customers do not specify a data center for the deployment of their application. Instead, an availability zone is the most granular level of a specification that a customer can make. However, a data center is the location where the actual data resides. Amazon operates state-of-the-art highly available data centers. Failure can happen that affect the availability of the instances in the same location. If you host all your instances in a single location that is affected by such a failure, none of your instances will be available. Data centers have a redundant design that anticipates and tolerates failure while maintaining service levels. Amazon CloudFront is a content delivery network used to distribute content to end users to reduce latency. Amazon Route 53 is a domain name system 
service requesting going to either one of these services will be routed to the nearest edge location automatically in order to lower the latency. The AWS point of presence are located in most of the major cities around the world. By continuously measuring internet connectivity, performance, and computing to find the best way to route the requests, the point of presence deliver a better near real-time user experience they are used by many AWS services, including Amazon CloudFront, Route 53, AWS Shield, and AWS Web Application Firewall. Regional edge caches are used by default with Amazon CloudFront. Regional edge caches are used when you have content that is not accessed frequently enough to remain in an edge location. Regional edge cache absorb this content and provide an alternative to that content having to be fetched from the origin server. The purpose of this activity is to explore the AWS Management Console. You will gain experience by visiting multiple AWS services and you will also practicing navigating to these services in different service categories. So if we go to the console now, you can find there is a list of all services based on their category. You could also use the search bar for searching for a specific service, for example, EC2, and you will visit the EC2 from the search result. You could also go to the service based on the category for a compute services, for database services. You can select DynamoDB, Amazon DB, or an RTS. You could also by selecting the RDS, you will go to that specific service page and you can also start to work in the console. There is services for a blockchain, there is services for Internet of Things, and there is other services for containerization. So if we go to the network and content delivery, we can view there is a VPC or our virtual private cloud. Now by default, each region will have a default VPC created with all the required subnets. So this is like the default VPC in North Virginia, and these are the six available subnets because North Virginia contains six availability zones. You could also go and switch the region. If you switch the region to another region, you will find that each subnet is associated with a specific availability zone, and a VPC is always associated with a region. So going to the Irish region, you will find now different virtual private cloud ID, and different number of subnets associated and specific only to the Irish region. If we go to a service like IAM, you will find that the IAM service is a global service, which means it's available in all regions. The configuration you made in the IAM service will be applied to all AWS regions. However, if you go to another service like ROS53, it is another global service, which means it's not associated with a specific region. And the same thing apply when you use Amazon S3. But if you go to the EC2 services again, now you will see that the console changed the region name from global, and it will give you the name of the region where you are located. Now you will find that this EC2 will be only associated in North Virginia. If you change the region, you will get different number or different value of those EC2 because EC2 is not a global region. So what we learn in this lesson, AWS infrastructure is divided into region and availability zone. Selecting a region, your choice of a region is typically based on a compliance and requirements or to reduce latency. Each availability zone is physically separate from other availability zones and has a redundant power networking, and connectivity. The AWS Global Infrastructure has several valuable features. First, it is elastic and scalable. Second, this infrastructure is fault tolerant. Finally, it requires minimal to no human intervention while providing highly available and scalable services. Leave a comment down below if you find this content very useful. And don't forget to claim your exam voucher by leaving a comment and subscribing to the channel. Thank you again and see you in the next one.